Hello and welcome. You are listening to the Gay With God podcast, a safe place for us to share our stories and support one another. How long did we know? What challenges did we face? Did we lose our faith? When did we find our way back home? Or are we still searching? The stories you hear on this podcast will melt your heart and strengthen your belief that in God, all things are possible, and you can be, authentically, gay with the God of your understanding. I am your host, Midge Noble, and I am very honored that you are here. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Gay With God podcast. Ooh, it has been cold. Now, I love cold weather, and I have nothing against cold weather. I would prefer that all cold weather comes with snow because that is my happy, happy, happy winter weather, and I love it. However, I don't like bitter, bitter freezing cold. Not a fan of that. Not a fan of ice. So I would love to be in a place where I got lots of nice, fluffy, maybe some good packing snow, but I don't like this frigid, (laughs) below-the-teens weather with any kind of wind whatsoever. So we've been navigating our frigid kind of weather. And I know it's not as cold here as it is somewhere else. But, you know, everybody has their own location and you get used to it and where your skin is used to being. And when something plummets deeply into teens and wind chills below teens, for uh, for me, I'll speak for myself, for myself, that's just too cold and not fun. There is no fun in freezing weather with no snow for me. So we have been surviving um, with uh, dual heat. We have our own heat here, and we also have a plug-in heater that has helped us keep uh, warm. And for me, at some point in my life, my hands decided that they didn't like cold weather. I do not have any kind of disease. Uh, I know people do have a disease called Renaud syndrome. That is not what I have. I just have really sensitive hands all of a sudden, and they will freeze in very cool weather, um, and especially with the wind. So my beloved got me heated gloves, and I wear my heated gloves, and that helps. They still get cold, even in the heated gloves. However, they don't hurt anymore, so I'm grateful for her and her insight. And I I give a shout out to my cousin, Candy Noble Wallace from Virginia, who gave us the idea to get those, and then my beloved followed through with that as a gift, and I really liked it. So I'm also very happy that you guys are using the comment section on the app, um, the podcast app, so that I can see what you're saying and thinking about the podcast. I'm also getting some messages from you guys, and I'm making new connections with people who reached out and let me know how the podcast has affected their life, how it's bringing some clarity and some peace into their life which then prompted them to buy the memoir, Gay With God, Reclaiming My Faith, Honoring My Story. And I I love that. I love hearing that my memoir is doing exactly what I wanted it to do. It is going out into the world to people I don't know. And they are buying it and they are having insights and, and some transformations. And they are feeling less suicidal they are feeling more uh, open to the possibility of where they want their faith to go and i just love that like i've always said you know wherever you land in your faith after going through religious trauma wherever you are particularly right now in this moment with your faith that's exactly where you are and there is no judgment from me I have no judgment about what faith or denomination you may be a part of I have no judgment against whether or not you go to church or you don't I have only love for you and I have love for you to be able to reclaim whatever is going to make you feel whole again So I appreciate your thoughts and your feelings always. Please feel free to either email me at empoweredmidge at gmail.com or go onto the app after or the show page after uh, I post something and give me a comment about how that how that landed for you how it resonated with you. If you want to make your comments private feel free to reach out through the email. I will uh, definitely respond. If there are ugly comments that come through, I probably will not respond. I will respect your opinion, but I'm not debating. 
or getting into an ugly conversation. I will honor you and I will hold you in the light of who you are. I will not debate uh, this, this whole thing. For me, I debated for a long time. I absolutely did. I tried really hard to defend the faith that I had been taught, uh, even when I didn't have all the answers to my questions. And that's what's changed for me. I don't have answers to my questions. And I may never have answers to some of the questions. Like, as we've talked before, why do I follow a God that I don't know how he got created? Why do I follow a God that um, did some pretty horrendous looking things in the Bible? I have no answers for that. All I know is that I am hot wired to have a faith grounded in believing that there is a God and that God of my understanding needs to be explored through the Old Testament and the God of my understanding as far as the New Testament goes is that it's all about love. He brought Jesus in and it's all about love and that's what I'm all about. So that's awesome. So why is my podcast today why is this episode being called the ideology of hate well here's why because the word if you look it up in the dictionary which i did um it is a system of ideas and ideals especially one which forms the basis or economic or political theory and policy well in this country right now i think there is an ideology of hate I think that we have created systems in place for our own either economic or political ideals that we want to make that a policy for everyone. So Christian nationalism would be an example of that for me. When I think of Christian nationalism and I see people promoting the word Christian in their ideology, they are wanting it to be a white Christian nation and they have a very strict guideline as to who's in and who's out and what faith you may be and whether or not your faith or your own religion is in or out. This has always just astounded me once I heard about this because I don't see that at all in what Jesus taught. The other day on Facebook, I have some special groups that I post to on Sunday mornings, and some most of the time I'll put it on my own page as well, but the, the quote that I posted this past Sunday was from a Dutch Catholic priest, professor, writer, and theologian who is no longer with us, but his name is Henri Nouwen, Henri Nouwen. Um, he was Dutch, and I hope I did not botch that up too badly. Um, but he was very inspirational in what he wrote and what his quotes were. And this was one of his most quotable quotes, most inspirational quotable quotes. And it says, for Jesus, there are no countries to be conquered, no ideologies to be imposed, no people to be dominated. There are only children, women, and men to be loved. Now that resonated with me so much this past Sunday when I saw this somewhere else and I reposted it for my groups and for myself that that is exactly what the Jesus movement is. The ideology of hate is human made because it all began in love. God loving God's creations, everything the stars, the moons, the waters, the lands, the, the humans that God put on earth. God loved all of it, and it was good. And God did this out of love. God did not need people. He did not need all of this, but created this out of love and then decided he would love to have humans on this earth to live in love in abundance fearless uncomplicated just being can you imagine just pause for a moment and think about what it would like to just be in bliss 
I know, right? How many of you had a hard time powering down at all? I know I couldn't give you too much time or people would think that I'd probably not recorded this. But, but that moment when you get off this podcast, I would love you just to jot down a note to yourself to say, take a moment of bliss. And what that would mean is that we take a moment to disconnect, almost like you've got power cords plugged into your body that you can pull out that bill you have to pay. Pull out, I'm not saying forget it altogether. I mean, just for the moment, okay? But pull out that bill that you need to write a check for. Pull out the argument that you had. Pull out the hustle bustle of your schedule and all of the things that are getting complicated in your life that are stressing you out just unplug all of those things literally see yourself unplugging the cords out of your body and then sit for a moment in bliss and one thing that a dear friend of mine tracy got for me was my singing bowl i've mentioned this before i love the sound of the singing bowls i love the sound of gongs and often i will start my meditation time with that i actually have an app on my phone for centering prayer and i chose the gongs to be uh, played before i go into a relaxation or a meditation so those things can sometimes, any kind of music might help you if you need to have something in the room. But if you can also just sit in silence and allow yourself just to be in that moment without any other white noise or interference, whichever way is most comfortable for you, as long as you're at peace, is perfect. So being in peace and especially when you're looking at connecting with spirit is a time for you to just be in whatever comfort mode you want to be in whether it be laying down or in a yoga position seated all of that's fine but please take that moment and try to connect with your own internal bliss the reason i chose henry's quote was because i I'm so concerned about how we're getting this off track. And we've really missed the mark with how Jesus walked this earth. He did not care where you came from. He talked to the Gentiles. He talked to people who were set apart from everybody else, the sick, the lepers, the women. He talked to anybody. So he did not care where you came from. He didn't care how you got to where you were. He didn't check papers. Now, I'm not getting into a whole discussion about the borders, but I'm just saying that Jesus didn't have that in his mind. I know he was respectful of laws and always said, give back to Caesar what is Caesar. So he did respect the rules. However, he also challenged them when they went against God or marginalized people. He was very clear that all people should be included. I think about that t-shirt that the human rights puts out, y'all means all. And I think that's how inclusive Jesus was. I can just imagine Jesus being in that t-shirt and wearing it around the country right now. <laughs> Anyway, maybe not. <laughs> so when I think about the hate that is in this country right now, I know, 100% know in my soul that it is not of God and it is not of Jesus. That the ideology, you know, does not have to be imposed. Your personal ideology of hate does not and absolutely should not be imposed on everybody else. We should not live under a dictatorship in this country. And if anyone is trying to impose that political ideology on us, that it has to be this way, you have to have this religion, you have to have this color of skin to be here, you have to follow these rules that we are putting in place, not that the people have passed as laws, but what we decide, one person, one guide who wants to come in um, and just make it their way. Jesus did not have that in Jesus's message. 
He did not impose what he believed and what he was here to talk about and to preach to us. He did not impose that on others. He offered it to others. Come and see, he would say. Or he'd say, follow me. But everybody had a choice. Many people did come, but there were some that didn't. For whatever reason, they could not take that step. And Jesus loved them anyway. And I feel that Jesus also hurt, you know, when somebody could not get the peace that he knew they were seeking. So hate stops us from seeing that in people. It stops us from not dominating people because we will dominate people that we fear. We will try to dominate them. And that's where hate comes from. Hate comes from fear, in my opinion, that when I hate something, it's because I've already feared it. I will say, I hate horror movies. Well, why do I hate it? Because I've seen one and it scared the the life out of me practically. And I hate them. I don't like being scared in that way. There are certain things that I'll say I hate, like flan, that dessert in in the restaurants, or I'll say that I, I hate... Um, the poofy stuff, wh- whipped cream. I, ca- oh, I can't stand putting p- poofy stuff in my mouth. Those are just my own little quirks. But, but that's, I don't fear them. I don't fear desserts or anything like that. But we use that word hate really regularly. And we don't really think about, do we really hate that? Like, no, I don't really hate. I dislike the texture of the flan, however you say it, or the whipped cream. So I choose not to eat it. So one, I would like us to be very careful about how we use that word hate in our regular conversations. And I'll try to be mindful of that as well because it's not really living in the truth because I don't hate it. Now, there are things I do hate and that is not being of love. So, you know, working on our words, working on our understanding of what we're saying, it is absolutely okay that I will not vote for the person who was voted into our presidential office in 2016. I will never vote for that person. Didn't vote that back then, won't vote for that person now, because I believe that that person is doing a hate campaign. And I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to have a dictator in my country. I don't want to have any kind of harm coming to our community, to any marginalized community. I don't want any of that. And I have hated him. And it nearly destroyed my soul. So I have worked very hard since 2016 to stop feeling hate toward this person. However, I will not vote for them, and I pray every day that we as a country will be spared any more political offices from this person, because I don't believe that that person is capable to lead our country in the way that Jesus would want it to be led. And you can say, let's let's keep church and state separate, you know. Well, you know what? But nobody does. Nobody keeps it separate. Because what really happens is that it's used all the time in politics. And it's on our money. In God we trust. Not everybody trusts in God. But somebody mandated that many, many years ago. And I think that... We have to be really careful about what we say we believe when we don't really follow it. And I don't think it's fair to have prayer in school when you're only going to pray one prayer. There are many different ways that people pray, and there are many different faiths represented in a school system, and there is just no compassion in the system that puts in prayer in schools when you have to pray to only one your definition of God. I think that God is all faiths, really. I don't believe that God has a religion. I think God is the creator. And anything else that we've created falls under us. It doesn't fall under God. 
I choose to believe that God of my understanding is the one who created the earth. But my Native American brothers and sisters may call that God something else. So what? <laughs> there is a creator and we are all diversely and createdly made. And so, of course, my God may look different than your God and still be the same God. My expression of faith in the Episcopal Church, the liturgy we do, what we believe may be a little different than what you believe under the same faith, but a different way to express it. So not all Christians worship the same way, and yet we're all basically Christian. For those who are not Christian and may be Jewish, they may be Islam, it's all different. And we have to respect everyone's ability to practice their faith in their unique way. Because Jesus did not have a denomination. Jesus created a body of people to be the church, not the building, not a specific way to express that. There's nothing in the Bible that tells me that I have to kneel to pray. There's nothing in the Bible that tells me I have to sing out of the Episcopal hymnal. Liturgy and how we express it is rooted in some historical writings, and that's, that's all fine and good. But that doesn't mean that if we do it a different way, and I've been in lots of different churches. I've been at a Baptist church. I've been at a Catholic church. I went to a congregational church. That's the first time I knew that some people actually drink wine instead of the grape juice, which was a super big surprise to me. I'm now an Episcopalian, and I love the liturgy. I love the structure of the Episcopal church. It fits me, and it fits me because we still laugh during sermons. We still express our amens if we feel like it, and we've clapped for children. We've clapped for other people. We celebrate birthdays. It's, it's a very liturgical setup with the vestments and in in the way that we do certain things but it is just such a loving community and i really really appreciate being able to be in that space so for jesus there are no countries to be conquered he did not believe in conquering countries that was done by the time he came on the scene it was all about preaching what was going to happen that love was the most important thing and to just be a part of that community of believers that wanted to be able to tell them the good news there were no ideologies that were born out of hate he wanted everyone to know that they were valued and to be able to be in the presence of people who cared about them he did not try to impose one faith or belief on anybody else. The times that he got really political were times when marginalized people were being hurt. And that's what he would speak out about. He would speak out for the poor. He would speak out for the widows. He would speak out for people who had been disenfranchised from the community. He was all about gathering people in, not excluding people. And there were no people to be dominated. He did not dominate and become a dictator in his teachings. He taught of love. He taught of forgiveness. He taught about going out and spreading the good news of salvation. Jesus was more interested in us as individuals, as is God, that there are only children, women, and men to be loved. And that is our call. Our call whether or not is if you're a pastor or a teacher or a nurse, whatever your calling is, everybody is also called to be love, to be love in everything we do. And that's also in when we're called to vote for people who are going to run this country. I'm not putting a dictator in that office. I'm not saying it won't happen. I don't know what's going to happen. 
because just with a list of other things that I don't know, <laughs> that's one of them. I don't know the end result of this, but I know what I'm going to do. I know that I will not vote for hate, and I will not vote for a dictator, and I will continue to vote my conscience that stands in what Jesus taught, and that was to love. The greatest commandment is to love. Love yourself, love others, and do that in everything you think, say, feel, and do. That's what we have control over. What are my thoughts? What words come out of my mouth? What are my actions? How do I feel? Am I always in a con constant state of hate and anger? Then I've missed the mark. What do I need to turn around or go back away from that's keeping me locked into that? Am I a part of a group that has an ideology of hate? How can I disconnect from that? And how can I stand back and walk the walk of Jesus, which is love? I really want to thank you for coming today and listening in on what I have to offer you. And I want to thank you for sharing, subscribing, wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to go to the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com. You can check out my links. You can check out where you can place a comment. And as I said before, I really enjoy reading those comments, and I thank you for them. Remember to check out our Facebook group, Gay With God, where we do a monthly faith group entitled My Faith Journey. We get into some great discussions, and I love that group, and we welcome new members. And all you have to do is go to Facebook, find the Gay With God Facebook group, and answer all the questions um, so that I can see you on the inside. If you need support to help you through your coming out or faith journey, go to the show page at empoweredmidge.podbean.com. Scroll all the way to the bottom and see how to connect with me. As always, there is a complimentary coaching session available to anyone who wants that. You can sign up for that and we'll have a meet and greet and we'll talk a little bit about what you need and see how we click. And if we're a good match and you want to receive coaching from me, I would be honored to walk your journey with you. Just remember that I am currently doing a Gay With God book club from the memoir. And as soon as the first uh, group comes to an end, I'll let you know if you're interested in signing up for the next one, please email me at empoweredmidge.podbean.com and get on the list for the next Gay With God book club where we go through the memoir. Um, we talk about anything that you thought while reading it. You can ask your own questions of me personally, and I can tell you some backstories. Every once in a while, I might show you a picture. So uh, if you're interested in that kind of personal connection with me from the memoir, please email me and let me know that you want to be on the list for the next Gay With God book club. If you are listening to this podcast and are questioning whether you can be gay and be in a relationship with the God of your understanding, if you identify as LGBTQI+, or not even sure if you are gay, God has always been within you, even when you didn't know it. You have always been gay with God. Thank you, everybody. Stay tuned to see how you can join the Gay With God community. And as always, you are loved. I want to invite you to become a part of the Gay With God community. How can you do that? Stay connected by messaging me your thoughts and comments in the comment section under the downloads of the show on the Gay With God show page. Subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen and share, share, share so we can increase our community outreach and be a light to those who are struggling to claim their faith. Consider being a sponsor so I can highlight your service in our community. We are all worthy of respect and a relationship with the God of our understanding. I want to thank you in advance for supporting this podcast. Together, we as a community will keep this show visible and our community stronger. Deep gratitude to my friend Tim McClendon of Tim McClendon Music for allowing me to use an excerpt from Interlude 4, a song found on his CD entitled Sundance.